Who, who's going to come out and say that it's fucking ridiculous that Flash is running 98% of video online? I have a few uh, thoughts, four arguments um, that I would like to present, uh, things that I think about um, for why open video matters. First um, <clears throat> uh, is what I would call the freedom case, and I think that's where a lot of us are coming from originally, um, where uh, free software comes from. And it's all the things that we've been hearing about today, freedom to uh, remix video, to use it on multiple devices, not to be limited by a gatekeeper, uh, the ability to quote and sample as we would uh, with text. <clears throat> I don't think I need to talk too much about those things because um, we all have heard so much about them and know so much about them. But there is a, a, another kind of freedom that's a little more subtle that, it, that doesn't get as much attention that I would like to mention. Um, and it's about uh, new types of interactions, about uh, freedom to have a space for exploration and development. And one of the things that's happened with videos themselves, um, as people have been empowered to create their own video, um, have you know, cheaper cameras, uploading, uh, better access to editing software, is that new forms of video have happened, new types of video that totally explode the, the kind of limited view that broadcast television, that Hollywood um, had been creating for what, what video could be, what television could be. <laughs> my sister, my daughter, I said I want the truth. Which is 
things that, that are a little bit harder to put a, a price on because they're free, because they're open, but that provide as much and, and even more value to us as a society. So the more open the video becomes, the more social value uh, gets created. And you can see that um, in, in the internet more generally. Um, the amount of value that we all get, the riches we get in our life, because we can participate in an online social space where new and amazing ideas are popping into our inbox every day is incredible. And, and if you think about, you know, what would you pay to be in that club? But how much better is it because it's free and open to everybody? And, and I think that's what we're trying to build here. We're trying to build uh, something, something beautiful, a, a new way of understanding and interacting with culture, something that's, that's more, and more and more open, that helps us um, communicate, understand who we are, and why we're here, and how we connect to each other. is what I would call the governance case. And it's about um, the structures that, that we live in in society and the, the time that we spend online. And to me, um, it's uh, maybe the most important lens of all to look at the idea of open video. Um, and I think it's, it's clear to everybody here and, and to almost everybody in the public at large that systems of communication become structures of society. Ways that we communicate um, create social spaces, create modes of interaction between us. They shape and they channel the things that we want, we want to say. They either allow them or they don't. They either have choke points that can be closed down um, or they don't. And billions of people are spending more and more and more time online. All of us are spending more and more time online. Um, and so we're living in a new public space that, that is shaped by all kinds of forces. And the question is, who's going to control that framework? Who is going to define the public space um, that we're living in now and that's going to be an even bigger part of our future? And um, of course, I believe that um, we can decide what shape that takes. We can uh, determine how it's going to look and how it's going to work. We know at the very least that internet video um, is going to replace the, the massively powerful cultural institution of television, and that's going to make it a major structure of society. So who's going to control that structure? Who's going to be um, determining what that, that structure is? And if, if those um, systems and technologies are built on open technology, it means that outsiders have the power to innovate without permission. Um, it means more accountability to the public and its interests, and it ultimately means a more democratic society. So when, when we talk about open video and advancing open video, we're, we're talking about how we govern ourselves, how we decide how we're governed, or how we decide how we're not governed, um, and, and who is, is making those decisions. So we can leave, um, we can leave that shaping of, of the world to companies with proprietary interests um, that have a strong interest in creating um, choke points, being gatekeepers, making proprietary technologies, or um, we can decide to shape the world ourselves, and we can insist on openness at every level, and we can build a stronger democracy with new kinds of healthy social institutions that are open to everybody. That I think there's a, there's a moment happening right now with the release of Firefox 3.5 in the next um, few weeks or so, where we can start to convince video hosts to publish content into Og Vorbis and um, have a huge part of the video infrastructure suddenly flip and become open. Um, and there was, you know, there was an excuse with flash video, with um, better proprietary video codecs. There was reasons why they needed to be closed, um, and now that excuse is disappearing. And as simply as a political organizing campaign, um, this is a great chance to uh, go, you know, host by host, get them to change, compare them to their competitors that, that have already made the change, build momentum, um, create progress in open video and really um, change the market dramatically, push it forward.